Okay, lesson 39, we're going to continue to do two different problems from lesson 39 that we didn't catch when we were talking about radians. Um, so not only do we have to evaluate sine and cosine and tangent of radian measures, pi over 3, pi over 6, pi over 4s, and multiples of those, we also have problems like this, where it's going to ask you or tell you that the latitude of a point on Earth is the degree measure, sometimes they might mix it up and give you radians, um, of the shortest arc from that point to the equator. So what does that mean before we can get into the problem? Is what it means is that you have the Earth, and the Earth is a sphere. Okay? The Earth is a sphere, okay? And if we were to travel from one place to another on Earth, we would not be going a straight line. That's the problem. All of our math, if I asked you the shortest distance between two points, you guys would say it's a straight line to that point. For most intents and purposes, it works out fine when you're going over short distances because it usually is a straight line to get there. But when we start talking about geographically on the globe, you can't go from here in Green Bay to, say, Los Angeles in a straight line. You'd have to cut through the crust of the earth. So when you're on your airplane or in your car, you're traveling a distance on that earth like there. It's part of a curve. And so we can actually find out that curved distance instead of the straight distance. And so to figure that out, you need to know some things. And that's where we're talking about your shortest arc from the point A to the equator. So in this case, it's, it's asking us to the equator versus to another city. And that will be something later on. It's going to say, hey, one city is this. To another city, the degree from the center of the Earth is so many degrees. So if we read our problem, it says the latitude of Los Angeles to, is 34.05 degrees north of the equator. So if I use this picture, we would have the center of the Earth be right in the middle and you could connect that, and you would say that that right there is 34.05 degrees. And it wants to know, how far is it from Los Angeles to the equator? So what is this arc? We'll call that X for now, or maybe call it A for the arc. What is that distance if the diameter of the Earth, so that means all the way across distance, is 7,920 miles, right? So we have this idea that the Earth is fairly large, but we only want a little teeny piece of that. And what we're going to do is actually think of that we're looking at the Earth from the side, and Los Angeles right now is sitting right on the edge of the earth. And if I was looking at earth from an outside perspective, space station, whatever, and I could pinpoint Los Angeles just as it's coming across the horizon, right? I don't know if you guys can visual this. The earth would look like a big circle. So I'm going to go to the next page here. The earth would look just like a circle where we could see the diameter, or the equator, right? The equator would be there, and the equator probably would look more of a straight line for us, but Los Angeles would be like right there, right? And what our job is to figure out is what is that arc? That's a wrong color. I'd probably fill it in a little darker color. We want to know that arc. So here's the thing. When I'm taking that back step and looking at the Earth, it's a circle. For all intents and purposes, it's a circle, so therefore we're going to treat it like a circle. We should be able to find the distance all the way around the Earth. And how do we do that? Well, we're given 7920, right? That's miles. That is the diameter. Can you find something about the Earth given 7,000? 920 miles. What's that? 
I want to know all the way around. That would be called the circumference. circumference. What is the circumference formula for a circle? C equals 2 pi r. Well, okay. Well, that's just 2 times pi times 7, 9, 2, 0, right? Oh, it's not. What should it be? Half. Oh. Oh, so we got to take that out. That shouldn't be the diameter. It should be the radius. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Isn't the diameter twice the radius? But can't I take... Can't I just take this, 2 times r, and call that d? So wouldn't the circumference also be the diameter times pi? Instead of dividing the diameter, or the diameter by 2, putting it into the formula, and then multiplying it by 2, wouldn't you agree then? So then the circumference is now just 7, 9, 2, 0, pi? So pi is about 3.14. It's about 8,000. I'm just throwing rough numbers out there. That's about 24,000? 24, 24,000 miles. If you were to start in Green Bay and go directly on a latitude line, right? Or longitude. Longitude. Longitude goes vertical. And if you were to travel all the way that around the Earth, you would end up doing that. Okay? If our kids here talk, talking about our um, Earth being circular, um, you would travel 24,000 miles. I think the space station circles the Earth about a couple times a, an hour, is it? Yeah, and it's even further than even the, that. That's, that just tells you how fast the space station cruises 24,000 miles an hour, if not more. That's pretty fast. Okay. But, okay, so we got to use this information. But here's the problem. I don't think that you're traveling, on back to our, our idea here, are you really traveling 24,000 miles from Los Angeles to the equator? No, 24,000, give or take, right? We didn't actually figure that number out. The 7,920 pi, that is for the distance to go around the whole entire world. We're not using the whole entire world. We're not going the whole world. We're only going just a little bit. And how does that, how do we use that information, that little bit? Well, that little bit was how many degrees? It was 34.05 degrees. Out of how many? More than one. It's 360. You're only using 34.05 degrees out of 360. I turn it into a percentage. And then I just take that percentage and multiply it to the whole thing. If I told you I ate 25% of the candy that was here on th last Thursday, and there was 100 pieces of candy, how much did I eat? 25 pieces. Okay? That's how we use this. If I told you, or we could figure it out, is 34.05 out of 360, and I multiply that percentage times the 7920 pi. That will tell me exact distance between Los Angeles and the equator. So you take your calculator out. What's 34.05 divided by 360? It's a little less than 10%. What do we get? Point zero 0.09? Zero 0.09 or 0 0.9? Point 0 0.09, yep. Point zero 0.09. What's the next? Is there some? Four? So it's about 9.4% of the Earth's circumference. Multiply that by 7920 pi.
Go ahead and throw pi in there. Now, when you use pi in your calculator, use the pi button. When you use the pi button, you're going to get um, a better approximation. You end up finding that the distance to the equator from Los Angeles is... Give or take 4,000. Okay, we got it. Is that 34? No, 6,000. That's 34.05. But um, what do we end up having? Can anybody back that up? And that would be? I got 2, oh, 2,000? Seems like 2,000 would be. Okay, we'll pause it and we'll make sure. We okay, a little bit of calculator error in here. So therefore, it should be approximately 2,338.9, we'll say, miles. Oops. Okay. So that, that seems about right to get to the equator from Los Angeles. The other example that the book wants you guys to, to talk about is that somebody is measuring the height of a building. And what they're doing is they're standing here and they see a building that's 4,000 feet away and they measure the angle to be point six degrees. It wants to know the height of the building. This, at this point, I would definitely tell you guys that if you're talking about buildings, buildings are usually built straight up and down. So therefore, it would be a 90 degree angle. But the book wants to use this fact that we just learned that if I took a, I know this is going to look really bad because of well, how large it is, that if I take this and I draw a circle, the circle would continue through here and that would be part of a circle. And therefore I would have this thing on the outside which would be called the arc length. And they're saying that without using your trig, trig your Sokotoa, you could approximate the height of your building. But this only works if the angle is like super small. Because therefore you know that this triangle in the large scheme of things would have to be a really, really large circle. So therefore, your height of your, of your um, actual building would be super close to the actual distance contained of the arc length. And so what they want you to do is set up the whole idea again. Here's your radius. Here's your angle. So you'd be talking about 0.6 out of 360. And you multiply that to your... Um, circumference formula. And circumference would be 2 pi times 4,000. So they want you to still use the fact that I could have this very large circle, right? And then you're, you're using the arc length of just a very small portion of it. I don't like it. If you see something about a building and it gives you a length and it gives you an angle, I'm, de I'm just going to default to sine, cosine, or tangent to figure that out. I'd get the exact answer and it'd be easier. Because this time it gave us the radius and not the diameter. Okay? You can use this form if you want. But I think it would be easier to use tangent. So, moving on from there. Now we're going to talk about the different forms of lines. Forms of lines. You guys know this one. This one would be called not standard form. Slope intercept, Slope intercept form. Slope intercept form. This one is well, standard form. It's standard form. Now, they start to give others. Now we get standard form. We get now we can have general form. 
General form looks very close to standard form with one modification. <coughs> and I think they usually put a plus sign there. Is the fact that it is set equal to zero. You have to kind of put it into standard form first, and then you bring the C value over. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative, and set it equal to zero. That's general form. Another one we have is called double intercept. Double intercept form. And double intercept form looks like this. X over A, Y, that's not a Y, Y over B equals 1. Where A is your x-intercept and B is your y-intercept. Okay? 